importance of the physical design engineer. So as I said to you, aim of any PD engineer, physical design engineer, is to realize the logic. So he is kind of converting that logical format thing to the physical format. So time to market plays an important role in the PLS industry, and PD engineer plays a crucial role here in this project, in this aspect. For example, uh, if any of the person uh, has done the mistake, so because that is kind of burden to the physical design engineer, because if something needs to be changed in the logic, PD engineer has to do all the things again from starting. He has to do the flow plan, placement and everything again. That means like if some mistake is there in the, from, from any person on the top, that PD engineer uh, has to be uh, should be in a position to take that, incorporate it and still we need to give or we need to deliver the project on time. So you know the person PD engineer is the one who is going to do all the kind of sign off checks and will be kind of doing the tape out. So is the, this is the guy, this is the last step in our uh, fabrication of in the designing part. Now uh, if at all a person has done any kind of mistakes like uh, PJ engineer is, is the one uh, obvious person who is going to be uh, responsible for that because and, uh, time to market is very important because the example say uh, like uh, we have uh, like say back to school days so when we have some back to school days so we want uh, all our latest chips on board in, in our level readily available on the market so that means like so this is the this is the time when when most of the parents or students will uh, think to uh, like uh, kind of buy new gadgets or kind of buy uh, new things which a uh, new uh, accessory is required for uh, for his study or anything so he'll be kind of buying that gadgets and he'll be keeping it handy and he'll be using that so if at all we miss that particular time slot if at all we have we don't have our product in the market at that time so when every person is trying to buy so then we, it's a huge business loss even if we have developed a little one month delayed or two months delayed or 15 days delayed also we can we can kind of lose a market share significant market share so that means we don't have any customer to buy our product and that's uh, that's a huge loss so that's the reason so the time to market plays an important or crucial role and uh, PD engineer has to uh, be uh, plays a significant and a prominent role because of the uh, said factors uh, before so responsible for delivering that to the various stakeholders. So this person he is like kind of uh, should give or deliver uh, the required uh, uh, required data to various stakeholders like whatever it may be packaging team or other other stakeholders which we have. So he he is the person who is going to communicate with the various guys in the project. So responsible for multiple sign off checks to make the design tape out ready. As I said, you tape out in the sense the process of sending, uh, doing the necessary checks and sending the data to the foundry uh, for fabrication. So he is kind of he should do various sign off checks and uh, make the design tape out ready. So that's how I mean, uh, that's what uh, the importance of the fiscal design engineer is. So now I just want to. Um, Take you through some of the latest trends in the lower technology node. So the one such thing is MBC FAT. So the multiple channel field effect transistor. So this is from the Samsung. So instead of using the nano wires uh, or the fins like this, so he kind of using the stacked uh, things. So where nano wires, uh, this is like nothing but gate all around gate all around structure, but the nano wires are now converted to the nano sheets. So this is a nano sheet here, which we have, and this is from the Samsung foundry. So it's like get all around, but uh, instead of using the nano wires, we kind of using the nano sheets here. So this is the latest advancement which we have. The next one is the 3D chip. So majority, uh, most of the time, we kind of have like say multiple. Uh, uh, we may need multiple. Uh, processors on the motherboard and we can have we need to have the communication from one die to the other die. so instead of having two different uh, processors on the motherboard and kind of enabling them 
uh, you um, in through the motherboard so why can't we have uh, one chip over the other that means 3d architecture so we have one chip on the top and another chip on the bottom so that means so this is like kind of 3d chip so if at all there is kind of how we have any kind of communication from one die to other die or one chip to other chip we can make use of the tsv which is nothing but through silicon via the help of through silicon via we kind of enabling the we kind of enable communication from one die to other die in the, in the help of tsvs so accessing a processor by the peripherals will become easier with this kind of output because now it need not to go all the way through some of the channels on the motherboard or whatever it is so that means if we are having any kind of communication from one die to other die so it it's kind of uh, uh, it will it will become easier so that is what i want to say as part of this 3d chip so this is one of the latest trend which we have in the lower technology nodes so monolithic 3d chip i will i will discuss in, it in the next uh, slides so case study so now uh, i just want to put in front of you some of the case studies which we have the first one is the self-catered register so reducing switching power or dynamic power consumption is one of the important tasks of any physical design engineer so we kind of uh, enable or we kind of develop our chip with uh, as much uh, minimal power consumption as possible so in order to do that uh, we can kind of use the clock getter to reduce the switching power because uh, the clock is the one the signal which is which is uh, constantly switching from 0 to 1 0 to 1 it's the clock signal will switch forever so that means like majority of the switching power whatever we have is because of the clock signal whenever we don't uh, need some part of the design to work so we kind of uh, disable the clock to that that means the switching will be kind of reduced so we can kind of uh, disable that with the help of the clock gators so but even more effective is, is to use the self gated register so self gated register is nothing but so based upon for example we are having some clock and we have the input and we have the output so we have the clock signal like this over here so whenever uh, the output changes uh, sorry whenever the input is changed okay only then we need to store the data so in our digital world what we have we have only zero or one so we have only zero or one is what we deal with in our digital world so zero for example this data zero is the one which is stored here so from the, for the next clock signal if uh, the input is still zero do we think that we need to give the clock signal to this guy uh, and store the data no because already zero is stored so what we will do is we will kind of compare input and output so we will compare what will present on the output with the input if there is any change only then we will provide the clock signal to this guy so then the kind of i mean we can with this help with the help of this we kind of uh, uh, reduce uh, the switching activity and uh, is very uh, is very much uh, uh, better or better way uh, to do to do that but uh, it has its own complexities it's only one kind of case study it, it has to be implemented it has to be tested in various designs and uh, it will take some time to uh, realize this or make use this in our integrator circuits. So the next one is the triple battery. So as the technology node is shrinking, so for example, we are having uh, earlier we might be having a chip or we might be having a metal with this much thick. But as the technology node is shrinking, what happens is that the size or the width of it might shrink even further. So it can become like this or even even if you get all we go to the lower technology node it will it can be like a just simple line like this so that means like the width of the trans width of the gates or width of the uh, metals which we use is kind of reduced so that means like uh, it says that the fabrication or uh, it has become like pretty much uh, tough so you know the uv light frequency is uh, uh is like is some is something so if uh, we wanted to fabricate uh, this width uh, this larger width so 
it might be easy because for example say whenever you pass the uv light because of its uh, properties like uh, diffraction so instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, light falling on one particular area so i can say it, it can uh, for example instead of uh, spreading to this particular area it can now spread like uh, some uh, some more area than than expected so now if the if the width of this is reducing so if, if whatever may be the uv light uh, frequency which you use we kind of still have that loss and uh, then because of its uh, light because of the property of the light we cannot kind of uh, fabricate it as expected so now and now uh, so far we are using the double patterning but now going forward so as the technology node is shrinking so we kind of use the triple patterning also so in order to fabricate one layer now we will use three different kind of masks so uh, for fabricating one shape kind of use three different masks now so that is what nothing but the triple patterning so monolithic 3d chip so in the 3d chip the resistance offered by the tsvs are more so instead of fabricating two chips and connecting them using tsvs we can form two active device layers that means we can kind of form two different transistors on one chip one above the other and now so we can eliminate the usage of the TSVs also. That means uh, both of both of the transistors uh, are on one chip. That means one above the other, we have two transistors. So that is what nothing but my monolithic 3D chip, and it has a lot of uh, fabrication complexities involved, and it takes some time to make. And the last slide for today or for now is the job opportunities one can have. So one can choose one of the following roles uh, like front-end engineer, verification engineer, physical design engineer or the DFT engineer. So the front-end engineer is kind of developing the logic. So with the help of uh, Ethelog or some other tools, the verification engineer is going to test the logic which is developed by the front-end guy. And then the physical design engineer is going to revise that logic and the DFT guy is going to uh, enable the process of testing once the chip is fabricated. So these guys are, I mean, these are the, some of the important roles that you can have uh, as part of, uh, uh, I mean, if at all you wanted to be in the VLSI industry. So these are some of the companies which we have, the product based companies, uh, some of the startup companies and some of the service based companies and uh, tool based companies the tool guys are the ones who are going to provide our softwares in order to uh, uh, help doing our uh, respective tasks by these guys front end verification fiscal design or dft guys so like so yeah we have i mean i mean I have, I, i'm just flash you some of the uh, known or like some of the companies uh, which are out there in the market but we have uh, several other companies in the market and yeah we have like say i mean i can say the opportunity or uh, uh, the field is very narrow uh, compared to software which is widespread the opportunities which we have is very narrow but yeah we have significant number of companies now in the nowadays i mean the size of the companies is growing or the count of the companies is growing. With this, uh, I just want to conclude and yeah, thank you very much guys uh, for having uh, gone through my complete video and uh, I think, I hope this will kind of help you guys uh, in deciding or having or getting an overview of what is real SI. Thank you guys, this is Prashant signing off.